بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ایوری ون سو دس از اوور سیکنڈ لیکچر اباؤٹ رینے سانس ان پریویس لیکچر وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ دیٹ ہاؤ رینے سان اٹ اسٹارٹ ان یورپ اسپیسیفکلی فرام اٹلی اینڈ واٹ وار اٹس میجر اٹس میجر امپیکٹ آن یو نو لٹریچر آرٹ سائنس اسکرپچرس اینڈ آل ادر فیلڈس we will discuss how renaissance it entered into england and what was its impact on english literature so actually renaissance starts in uh, 14th century in italy but it took almost 100 years a century for renaissance to enter into england Uh, it started from late 15th century and uh, till early 17th century for instance you can say <clears throat> uh, like 1480 1485 the late 15th century and at early 17th century means 1610 1615 15. so somewhere about it's 100 and you can say 20 years or 130 years of time was of renaissance in england so after it started spreading in europe it took almost 100 years for renaissance to reach in england it was 1485 when tudor dynasty uh, it started ruling england so with the beginning of tudor dynasty renaissance also started uh, you can say a negation of medieval ages and specifically this uh, renaissance in english it flourished in second half of 16th century as i have mentioned here so second half of 16th century means from 1550 to onward till 16 and 1610 so this was the height of renaissance you see uh, christopher marlowe shakespeare all other big writers they started writing in this era so these 50 to 60 years they are uh, you know they have a lot of a uh, fame and lot of high big names of literature in this and in italy when we discuss about beginning of uh, renaissance it had impact on arts visual arts painting and other things but in england it had direct impact on literature poetry drama novel prose and all others so the themes of the literature they were changed the writers they got more liberty to write so they could write uh, about the subject whatever they wanted to talk about before that the subjects they were confined only to uh you know religious impact all the lessons they were taught through bible through religious impact and uh, religious impact and uh, it had religion has lot of importance there so although in this era religion had importance religion means christianity here because in europe in england the major uh, uh, the prime religion or major religion there is christianity so uh, before renaissance the theme whatever the literature was written it was written with specific reference to religion christianity but in renaissance the lit- the writers they felt liberty and freedom to write on as many themes as they wanted so what actually uh, bring uh, renaissance the story of uh, printing press uh, i mean if you minus printing press from renaissance so english literature history or english history or scientific history it has no value these inventions they have a lot of importance in every development printing press was something today i mean whenever a teacher assigns you any assignment or uh, you have been asked to print out anything it's just uh, a matter of few seconds for you to get it but in 15th century before 15th century it was quite difficult for people to get copies of the books because there was no printing press printing press means the books they were not copied in printing machines but if if a writer has written one book 
if he wanted to make it 10 copies or 100 copies he had to write every book by his own or get it written from others hand written books there was nothing like printed or like uh, i mean um, like printed books so when the books they were not in printed form uh, via uh, through machine uh, so the copies they were quite few and less uh, and the price was obviously very high so the books they were not reaching to the common people so books they were actually attributed to the high class elite and political elite only so william caxton was the first person who brought this uh, printing press to england although it had started working 100 years ago but this person this printing press it was invented by a german uh, i have mentioned his name in previous lecture but william caxton was the person who brought this printing press into england as he brought this printing press uh, the books uh, they were you know millions of copies of the books they were printed and books were available on cheaper rates they were available to all people and specifically the translation of the bible before that it was limited but no translation of bible uh, was given to each and every one bible was in latin language at that time latin language had uh, you know was as important as today english is in subcontinent specifically in our pakistan uh, the language of political elite and language of high elite you talk about uh, uh, you know uh, costly schools you talk about o level school you talk about hsn beacon house they all offering uh, you know uh, high class english language so at present in pakistan uh, the elite language or political language a uh, high elite language is english language in the same way uh, in 15th century 14th century latin was the prime language in england La latin was the uh, high elite language in england so bible was trans uh, translated into common english language and the copies i, I told you millions of copies they were printed and they were distributed among people in the same way all the books of poetry literature science fiction non fiction prose everything was printed in millions and in thousands so people they started taking interest in reading so books and knowledge it was coming common for uh, you know available for common people here i want to mention it when this printing press was invented at that time turkey the muslim caliphate it was uh, a very powerful state but as printing press invented when the king of turkey he was informed that a machine has been invented and knowledge is distributed to all people in europe uh, in neighboring europe uh, and it should be brought to turkey but the turks at that time they made the biggest mistake and they refused they said that this is un-islamic so it is not uh, in islam it is not allowed to print books Uh, so this was actually the downfall of uh, our our muslims they rejected the spread of knowledge in the same time when they were having discussion that uh, uh, this printing press it is uh, you know uh, halal in islam or haram in islam so forbidden or not forbidden acceptable or not acceptable at that time europe was making progress so there were you know science books they were published books on medical books on literature so this printing press delay in acceptance the scientific inventions it is one of the reasons that we were left behind in the world otherwise uh, the center of learning they were all uh, uh, muslims before that so this is history of printing press you when you read about turkish history we come to know this is the you know dark side of the history that they rejected this printing press so let's come back to our topic that books they were uh, available for common people uh, everybody could read it there were many when the books they were they were available for common people in this way many people they started writing in a similar way you can take today's example that we have uh, uh, this tiktok and uh, you know other like like youtube channels as i upload this videos so before that just you just go back 5 10 years ago if somebody wants to uh, be a good uh, to take part in movies or to become an actor or actress they had to 
you know, uh, prove themselves by going to the studios that they are good actors. But no, if somebody is a good singer or someone is a good actor, they just make a, a short video and they upload it available for everyone. So everyone who has the talent of acting or singing or something like that, their voices and their acting is available for everyone. In the same way, printing press brought books. When books became available for everyone, it actually uh, caused the emergence of many more writers. Those who started reading, they uh, most of them they become, or a, a number of them they become good writers. Unless and until they read books, they could never have been good writers. So. Uh, In literature, uh, its impact on literature was that uh, I have mentioned here four names. Uh, the list is mentioned in the next slide. But in literature, it's Edmund Spencer, uh, who wrote uh, Fairy Queen, Christopher Marlowe, the great writer. I mean, uh, uh, doctor, he wrote Dr. Faustus, uh, one of his uh, excellent plays. Uh, and he was, uh, if we make a comparison of Christopher Marlowe and Shakespeare, uh, Christopher Marlowe was, you know, uh, much higher than he occupies a higher place than Shakespeare because Christopher Marlowe, uh, it is said that he died at the age of 28 and 30. And at a young age of 20 and 30 before dying, he had written three to four super hit uh, dramas that actually stirred everyone. And Shakespeare started writing when he was, you know, about 50. Uh, plus at the uh, age of 50 plus he started writing so uh, dr faustus is the uh, actually main play written by christopher marlowe and shakespeare we all know about uh, this renaissance period is also known as uh, known as uh, shakespearean era or shakespearean period he wrote tragedies he wrote comedies he wrote tragic comedies he wrote sonnets uh, he is known as uh, a poet or a dramatist of love and the way he described actually he gave a new shape to drama and poetry that is why his more his works are translated into many languages of the world his plays are performed uh, in many languages and also his plays most of his plays their uh, movies have also been made on his plays and Ben Johnson also, he was uh, one of the famous uh, writers at that time in literature. So here we get the list of most famous English authors or most notable authors of English uh, Renaissance period, uh, specifically in the last uh, second half of 16th century. But before that also, this was, I have highlighted few those who are very famous and that you will study about them, their dramas, their prose, poetry, you will study in your uh, course also. Francis Bacon, John Donne, Ben Johnson, uh, Thomas Kidd, Christopher Marlowe, as we have already mentioned, Thomas More, William Shakespeare, we have already mentioned, Edmund Spencer, William Sidney, they were the most notable authors at that time. Uh, in English Renaissance because in England it had direct impact this uh, uh, um, on literature not on other subjects as it had on visual arts visual arts means printing uh, painting sorry so in Italy it had impact on painting painting was more prominent and making of statues and sculptures but in England it had impact on literature and these are the notable uh, uh, English writers English authors of that time we talk about now let's talk about some criticism on english renaissance most of the historians they believe that there did not exist any renaissance in england because this term renaissance was given to this specific period a late uh, 15th to early 17th century this was given in 19th century that this when this work was analyzed so they termed it as that it was english renaissance at that time but as we talk about uh, chaucer uh, the father of uh, english poetry they say that those who did not accept english renaissance the historians it is only a conflict between the historians do not be confused about it uh, do not think that there was no renaissance period existed it did exist but there is an opposite view also and other view also about it we are discussing that 
they say that before 15th century before the late 15th century uh, there were few writers william lingland and geoffrey chaucer who had already started writing in english language so there is uh, a giving a, you know name of renaissance to a specific period and saying that it started from late 15th century it is not true and it is not acceptable so they say that about 200 years ago they have already started writing so in literature they according to them those who are critics of renaissance they say that uh, english renaissance never existed and uh, chaucer and william lingland because they are not renaissance writers but they wrote in uh, their poetry and all their works they were in english language let me tell you again that latin was the high elite language french was the elite language but english was just a common language and nobody even i mean if any work was published in english in 12th or 13th century it was considered as a low level work not a high work so somebody who wrote in latin it was considered as a, a highly valued work or highly valued literature work so these are the comments of uh, historians those who criticize renaissance they believe that it had already existed so it is useless to give name of english renaissance and then let us discuss how this renaissance and as i told you that uh, second half of 16th century uh, it was uh, the peak of renaissance like the dramas the poetry it all it gave birth to like uh, uh, christopher marlowe shakespeare and all others the great names Uh, they came in this period because the writers they got so much uh, liberty so in this uh, tudor dynasty there was king henry 8th who ruled england from 1509 to 1547 so what happened to this uh, henry 8th uh, i have written here issue less so it is uh, a wrong word so instead you say that no children henry 8th had no children from his first marriage as he had no children there was no democracy so there was no one after his death there was no one to rule the state so he wanted to have a second marriage but in uh, christianity in catholics those who strictly believed conventionally believed in religion and christianity uh, you know polygamy or second marriage two marriages uh, at the same time they were not allowed so this was the reason because henry 8th he wanted to have children but he couldn't get any children from his first wife now he wanted to marry again but religion was the biggest hurdle in his way to marry again so he was the one this was the reason uh, that actually gave birth to conflict between henry 8th and church church means religion so religion was uh, very much powerful at that time Uh, he could not go against the religion but he uh, simply what he did this uh, the tug of war it started between church and the and the king henry 8th so he actually abolished church he overthrew it and he became head of the state as king and head of the church himself instead of the pope before that a religious head was the pope and king uh, the authority of the pope was much higher than the king Uh, because they had strong clutches in the society but this was henry 8th actually when he uh, took power of church also in his hands then it gave liberty to the writers so now you can understand that how this renaissance period it started and it gave birth to uh, great writers like christopher marlowe and shakespeare and all that if if the church uh it had never uh, it had, had it not been taken by henry 8th into his hands then probably uh, this much progress in literature could never have been possible but uh, this was the reason of his marriage and having no children so he wanted to marry here again a conflict of two christian sects one is catholics and one are protestants so protestant are the modern uh, i mean those who believe in modernity and catholics those who conventionally believe in church conventionally believe in uh, christianity so they have also sects as, as we have in our religion islam uh, then let's discuss about what were the key features of renaissance when we talk about this uh, misspelled here uh, i didn't correct it you make it uh, make its correction k 
key features of this spellings of renaissance so uh, the first uh, factor of renaissance was reforms in institutes so all the corruption and other things that were involved in institutes like church and other uh, government and non government institutes there was the reforms uh, you know introduced by um, the king because he was not having no uh, now the church or uh, uh, the priest or you know the church people or not having any sort of uh, obstacle or they could not create any hurdle in the way of king to reform the institutes so, so first of all uh, reform the institutes they were reformed reformed means to make something better to make something more acceptable so the now the things they were uh, you know moving towards uh, uh, betterment as compared to the previous ones second one was the reason instead of blind belief now the people they started believing in the re reason that if something is happening there must be a reason behind it before that it was not like that uh uh like uh, there was nothing before that the people they had blind belief so one example you can take here for for instance like uh, uh a blind belief you can have uh, most of the time the people they say uh, like uh, a crow is crowing on the wall and some guests are coming still we have these blind belief but there is no reason behind it but at that time it was the uh, it was first time in england when people they started believing in reason instead of believing in beliefs only so they started finding facts behind every happening so this was actually the beginning of science and scientific era also so uh, uh, the people they started thinking scientifically and technically instead of uh, following what has been thought true for 1000 years they did not believe it true because their forefathers they were believing it so uh, in this way you might have read the chapter in uh, your second year course using the scientific methods where they mentioned about the charms and all others uh, some uh, you know superstitions so people they started believing in reasons instead of superstitions because the negation of superstition is science so this was the beginning of science also and the other key feature was man centered society before that it was you know just a spiritual centered society a religious centered society but now it was man centered that whatever is happening man has to do, man is the cause of many things so man has thinking uh, humans have thinking humans have their power to do work humans can do many things instead of believing that something will happen automatically so instead it was man centered believing on the uh, efforts of man so these were the key features of renaissance in england then in english drama uh, uh, there are uh, the things are written about poetry also let us discuss only about drama in this lecture uh, about poetry and prose this short uh, just five or 10 minutes lecture that we'll upload it in next lecture so uh, drama was written about comedy and tragedy before that it was tragedy uh, before this renaissance period actually whatever the dramas they were written they were written with specific reference to religion but no they were the dramas written they had least connection to religion uh, as you when you will read shakespeare dramas or sometimes you get a chance to watch movies that are made on shakespeare dramas you find that there is hardly any sign of religion or hardly any reference from bible so they were commonly written and uh, as far as the because the uh, dramas written in those days there was not tv or any cinema or any technology so dramas they were performed on stage so beginning of drama and movies it all started from stage uh, performance in theater in daytime uh, before that in theater the performance was done not uh, performed the plays they were not performed in daytime but this was the time it was open for everyone in daytime also so it was not forbidden now and when it came uh, you know theater they flourished it flourished the acting culture so many actors they also uh, they make there are big names those who uh, today we see many movies and dramas that they are acting so this was uh, the beginning of acting in 
England. But before that, in ancient Greek, actually acting started in ancient Greek somewhere 2500 years ago. But in 16th century, acting culture, it flourished in England. And the most important element of this renaissance is about 12,000 new words they were introduced in English language. Uh, from various languages, mostly from Latin and, uh, and French, for example. French is the language whose words they are taken by English language. 12,000 new words, for example, uh, uh, you can say a word CV. Sometimes you go to an office and they ask you when you apply for a job and they say that we need your CV. This word curriculum vitae, actually, it's, uh, it's the abbreviation of curriculum vitae. And this curriculum vitae is uh, a French word which is now used in English. This is one of the examples. So about 12,000 new words they were entered into English language from other languages because when and it was the beginning of uh, uh, flourishing of English language. Once the language is, is restricted, it can never become popular. It can never become, uh, you know, a global language. And once it start taking words from other languages, then it becomes a great language. So this was the impact of uh, Renaissance on drama also. This is our second lecture about Renaissance.